The House of Bob is made possible in part by Legend 7 Brewing and by support from listeners like you. To pledge your support, visit patreon.com slash the House of Bob. Last time on the House of Annihilation, our heroes manipulate the cosmos and descend into the sanctuary of the Sown Sisters. Now they stand at the first of five trials. Hello, I'm Jake, and I'm playing as Crate, a doomsaying disciple of Dendar the Night Serpent. I'm Dan, I'll be playing Liani, Liana Servana, the Elf Beastmaster, with my little buddy Hamlet. I'm Christina, and I play Douglas, the now harrowed Ganassi wizard who is looking to save his family's legacy. My name's Trevor, and I'll be playing Moore, the dragonborn warlock who has been trapped in the Tomb of Annihilation. And I'm Sean, your dungeon master. Thanks for joining us, and roll on! Lee puts the Staff of Striking up against the door carved with a triangle, pushes in on it, and it swings open. Inside, you see a very simple room, about 15 feet across, 10 feet deep. And right against the far wall is a five-foot-wide floor-to-ceiling glass cylinder. It's filled with light, the source of which is not apparent to you right now. There's a tiny triangular hole cut through the glass, five feet above the floor. Inside the cylinder, an iron lever is set into a metal plate on the floor. So have a look around, I guess. There just doesn't seem to be any, like, immediate danger. Yeah, this room has just a a plain, like, work stone walls. You've got this glass cylinder, triangle about chest height, cut into the cylinder, and on the floor inside, a lever. Triangle big enough for a triangle skull? No, it's too small. Hmm. All right. I'm out of ideas then. <laughs> Take some rope and mage hand, tie a little loop, and string the rope through the triangle into the glass cylinder and wrap it around the bronze lever and pull the rope. Is the mage hand going to pull on it or are you going to pull on it? I'm going to pull on it. So you, you have this rope kind of trailing out through the hole. Yeah. You yank on it and the lever goes. <laughs> oh, I'm further back too. <laughs> too late I'm outside <laughs> the lever moves clicks into place and from outside the room you hear a I poke my head out <laughs> is the like brass thing taken off you take a look down at the skeleton gate and you can see that the triangle seal has moved on the gate revealing a triangle shaped keyhole that would fit the skulls that you guys All have right. collected. Me and more did this room. You guys get the next. <laughs> I use my mage hand to untie the knot and collect my rope. Okay. Yes. Pretty, pretty sly. You're pretty smart now. <laughs> Unlike before. <laughs> got a MacGyver. Uh, every, uh... It's like that affected Man. me. Whoa. Like, can you imagine if MacGyver had mage hand? <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer to everything. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't More need so it. than duct tape. Yeah. He wouldn't need that bubble gum anymore. I don't think. <laughs> All right. We go to the next door to the right of it. Okay. The next door to the right of it is, well, to, to the left. Really. Okay. Sorry. But, to the left. But uh, this door is carved with a square. Who opens this one? We'll keep using the staff. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> open method. Oh, okay. We'll just volunteer me. That's cool. Not just you, your you staff. staff. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your staff if you don't want to do it. No, I'll poke it. This door has a pentagon carved into it. Lee goes up, pushes against it with her stave, and it swings open. You open it to see about a 20-foot long hallway, and right as the door swings open, this, this gust of air comes out of it, and the, this delicious aroma of spiced meat greets you. Oh, hell yeah. At the end of the corridor, the room opens up with red tapestries covering the walls. There's a feast spread out on three tables consisting of roast boar, squash stew, a tray of iced cakes, flagons of frothy beer. Complete the banquet. (laughs) No goat. Not yet. Any goat food? Is there like, yeah, hay or grass? (laughs) So I think the trial here is... Uh, (laughs) If if any magic thing I've ever learned is don't eat... Just magic food (laughs) lying around. Setting the table is a gaunt human male in a dusty black suit 
He's quietly arranging items on the cake table, and then he takes notice of your intrusion. Without a word, he gestures to you to come forward and sample the feast. Dungeons are so weird. <laughs> Why is this here? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's either going to be one of two things. This will actually be great, and we get like a stat boost for eating this food, or it's going to be terrible and turn into like, this was actually our family, and we're eating them now. <laughs> Does uh, the god guy look familiar? No, he doesn't. This is not anyone you've ever seen before. Does he seem like a real person? There's something off about him. He's too thin, too spindly. His fingers kind of all move together. He's just like, so oh, something's weird about him. It, he doesn't speak. He just like nods and, and gestures to you and uh, makes exaggerated facial expressions to be like, ah, yes, come, come and eat. And, and he points at the food. Mm-hmm. And Dan, as you get in there, you can you hear this voice inside you. That that war roast boar looks <laughs> delicious. We should, we should have some of it. I haven't had food in a long time. Let's let's just try so just a little bit of the roast boar. Is this the god inside me talking to me? This is. This is Kubasan urging you. You can you can feel like your stomach growl. You've had it's been so long since you've had such good food. I mean, he encourages me to go into battle. I don't know. <laughs> I am kind of hungry. Battle with your appetite. Anything else in this room other than this uh, magnificent feast that I can't wait to tuck into? Seems to be it. No, I am immune to poison. (laughs) I'm going (laughs) to, instead of eating, I'm going to start lifting stuff up off the table. I'm looking for things that are like maybe on the table. Is there like a a stack of plates and forks on one end? Uh, Yeah, it's set up like a nice little buffet. There's, you know, plate. You could like gather stuff up if you want. I think it's that though. You've got these nice tapestries on the walls, uh, each of them made up of these pentagonal patches stitched together. You recognize some of the thread is probably from the spinning wheel downstairs. Mm. What are you guys' passive perceptions? 17 for Lee. Ooh, okay. 12 for Douglas. Okay. 14. It's just 11. Okay. Lee, as you're looking at these tapestries, you can see that there's something more here. There's like a subliminal image in it kind of have to like cross your eyes a little bit but you see it's hard to do that with goat eyes it's tough yeah you have to work real hard <laughs> <laughs> take one level of exhaustion wow. uh, you see this subliminal image in the tapestries of a devil's face it's like a magic oh, eye cleverly hidden mm-hmm. within the design it's like a magic eye exactly okay. uh, the, the, the devil's open mouth forms a pentagon hmm I head towards that. Okay. And I lift up the tapestry behind it. On the wall behind it, there's nothing. It's just a stone wall. Hmm. Are you sharing with us what you see? Yeah. I'm like, maybe you guys can't do the sweet cross-eyed thing I can do. But <laughs> It's really weird when you do it. Yeah. Man. I you see go. a devil face and it has a pentagon in its mouth. I suck at these. So, so I can't see it. And like you guys, <laughs> now that now that Lee's kind of pointing it out to you and you know, she's like, it's it's right here, and this is where the pentagon pentagon is. Yeah, and see these lines, and I like trace it out. And and you guys are you, oh yeah, there it is. You're able to see it. It's it's kind of it's shifting in and out, but you see it. There's mm-hmm. this devil's face taking up a fair size of the of this tapestry on the side, with this very clear pentagon, maybe two or three feet across. The devil needs to eat. Oh, that's not a bad idea because the the hexagon is what unlocks it. So is the devil this man in this room should we force feed this guy <laughs> i was thinking i was gonna throw like a yeah, a, a, yeah. Uh, like a like a roast beef or, yeah or the, roast beast. whatever is the nearest food item i grab it and as I you just... you actually turn around and the manservant is there with like a big sample tray for you perfect now, on, on it there's some roast boar there's little little like cups of stew like a canopy kind of thing little squares of the iced cakes fluted glasses of frothy beer and he gestures to you Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> I pick up the beer. Okay. And then I throw it at the the tapestry. You throw the beer at the tapestry. The tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that, that was a travesty. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting words in my mouth. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> the the beer as it splashes against most of the tapestry. At the points where there would be this big splash across the mouth, it seems to go through the tapestry into the mouth. (gasps) Dope. And and just disappears. 
somebody crawl through that mouth, I guess. Uh, do we throw more food into the mouth? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to start hurling food in there. You start tossing tons of food yeah, in there? Just yeah. anything and everything. It's just yeah. anything that goes through that pentagon I just pick disappears. up the old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I just throw him at the wall yeah. <laughs> it's such tender like, meat <laughs> I, I don't know if you're strong enough to do that Douglas. <laughs> Lee <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. if we, okay I get the legs you get, oh my uh, god. You get the arms <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like how Crate is one. like what <laughs> <And two. laughs> we're like yeah swinging him back and forth yeah. we're gonna throw him like butt end in first <laughs> Do we hear anything? Is like the door. You hear like, like especially when you're throwing the cake. You just and the and the, and the squash. You just hear this <laughs> splat of food like slapping against like stone. Oh, uh, so do I look outside and is the food coming out the hole um, in the door? You, you look behind the tapestry. Oh, you're looking out into the main hallway. Out yeah, into the you, main hallway into the green door. No, no, you don't see anything. Okay. I look behind the tapestry. It's nothing. The, yeah, the wall just, okay. is totally clean. But the cake is still going through. We can hear Seems it. Seems like yeah, it's now. some kind of gate or portal or whatever. All right. I'm going to take my pinky finger <laughs> and put it into the tapestry. Wow, what a you, risk. You point your pinky finger through the tapestry. Of my non-dominant hand. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were ambidextrous. It's a hoof now. It's a hoof. <laughs> <laughs> you put it into the tapestry and as it hits the fabric, it fades right through it. You pull your finger back and it's totally fine. Oh, okay. I'm right. going to go up to it then. Okay. And I'm going to stick my hand in. Yeah. Your hand is through the tapestry. <laughs> and then oh, the damn it. I missed the trick. And it's really trippy. <laughs> yeah. You push the rest of your hand, arm yeah. through and you hit something. Oh. It's like there's the shaft on the other side. I'm not listening to these guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There appears to be something, and you reach around and you grab what you think. You think it's probably a lever. Uh huh. <laughs> Stop doing the jerk off motion. <laughs> Why am I jerking him off in his mouth? It's about- <laughs> That's what this, you guys are implying. At this point. <laughs> oh, oh man. <sighs> We never really established an X card at the table. <laughs> but What's anybody, that mean? Oh, it's a, so it's this thing in RPG games where, mm-hmm. uh, uh, especially for people who are, are new to playing with each other, not comfortable with each other's levels of, you know, what the, what jokes are across the line. Uh, you have a card in the middle of the table with an X on it. And if a joke is going too far or a scene is going too far, you just touch the X card and everybody just moves on. I see. Yeah. It's like... Uh, you know, the safe word. Yeah. For... Stupid jokes. <laughs> Some stupid jerks need an X card. Yeah. And then jerks and jokes. Oh. <laughs> so just to be clear, we're all good with jerking people off in your mouth. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have no way to stop. More of the merrier. Right? <laughs> is that what this is for here? <laughs> is, that, is that the is that the X card now? Yeah. yeah. The house of Bob face. Oh man. Okay. You can tell that this is, a, a, it seems like a lever on the other side. You push on it and out in the main hallway, you can hear it. I take one of the cakes with me as we leave and I give it to Cranston. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is there, everybody's leaving? Uh, I think I'm our work here is done. I think Crate has a pretty good party trick that he can do with his mouth. What? <laughs> what? Excuse me. The, the, the devil mouth on the tapestry. Uh, it's too late now. Oh, no, but I, I missed an opportunity to put my arm into the. Uh, <laughs> pull it out and pretend that it uh, chopped him up. <laughs> that would have been great. Not again. <laughs> okay, you guys. Head. I'm going to slip a, a roast beast leg into my roast beast? jacket. Yeah, yeah, roast beast. Into your jacket? Yeah. You're not going to eat it? I, not yet. It's going to stink like roast okay. beef everywhere. Uh, I go microwave some fish. <laughs> oh, you're truly a villain. <laughs> Chaotic evil. You guys leave the room and you head back out to the balcony. You're overlooking the area and immediately all of you are hit with this absolute crippling pang of hunger in your stomachs. You now have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. And I got that cake or whatever. I didn't eat it. I eat it now? Too late. Too late. Yeah. So what? what's the negative again? Sorry. Disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. For how long? Do we just you have, have disadvantage it? on abilities. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> That's brutal. All right. It is a little. I hard. told you, it's either going to be really good or really bad. There was no... One of us like, should have tried. That sucks. Ugh. 
Do do skill checks count as ability checks? Yes. Okay. Ooh. That's literally the definition in fifth edition. Sure. Yeah. So you guys have done the northwest door, the west door. You still have the southwest, the northeast, and the southeast. Let's just go to the one that's next on in the okay. order. So that would be the southwest door. This is the first door that your wand pinged off of. And on this door, you see a hexagon. Okay. This is the door that it pinged off of. Yeah. So there might be a secret component All to it. Them. Push oh, it open. Oh, they're all. Yeah. It's just the whatever was the closest. Do we one want to, to do us. this one last in case it alerts them? Or? Well, then why? Sorry. Then why did Sean just make a distinction about this door? I'm just reminding you which door was which. When we did it, was it actually the closest door to us? When you originally did it? Yeah. Okay. Then I don't feel any. No, fear they all got something. Okay. We have to go through it anyway. Just creating tension, Trevor. Tension. Sorry. I push it open with my stick. You push it open and you see a 15 by 15 foot room. There is a large, cracked, six-sided mirror mounted above a stone shelf protruding from the opposite wall. Five unlit candles stand on the shelf, each made of yellow wax and covered with tiny black sigils. Scrawled on the wall above the mirror in dried blood are the words, Piggy, Piggy, Piggy. Let's let more take this one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Change into a pig more. Yeah, Piggy. No, we'll chase you around. Piggy, piggy. You guys are the worst. On him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> just, just some light ribbing. Is the mirror missing a piece out of it that matches the one that I have from my original mirror? Nope. Oh. <laughs> it's not all about you. <laughs> Didn't you literally take that one from the mirror when we broke it? Yeah. Okay, then, yeah. <laughs> it's just got a. It's just got kind of a crack through I, the middle. I of it. don't know. I just thought it would have been freaky if that were true. Yeah, it would have been it's freaky. true, right? Okay, so there's a mirror that has a crack in it, and written on it says "Piggy, Piggy, above, Piggy." Above it is "Piggy, Piggy, Piggy." Written in blood. Written in blood. Yep, in dried blood. And on the shelf below the mirror are five unlit candles, each made of yellow wax and covered with tiny black sigils. Let's look at those sigils. Just looks like arcane runes. What essentially? Uh, Arcana check. 19 for Douglas. These symbols appear to be symbols uh, related to the conjuration school of magic. Mm. So able to make something out of nothing or bring something from another plane into existence on the prime plane. Something like that. So I guess it might summon something, which is great. Good. I right. love when things summon things. The handle. <laughs> we need the. We need a lever in this room. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the lever will be in the mirror? Do we see our reflections through the broken mirror? Simple enough. Yeah, you can see them clearly. You see yourself. You see the the stone walls behind you. You can even if you kind of lean out of the way, you can see the entryway mm -hmm. behind you. The mirror appears to function normally. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's just light one and see what happens. To start, not light all five like <laughs> some characters. <does. laughs> you light the first candle. It is lit. Neat. Anything happen? No. I like the third candle. What? Nice. It's messing with the I whole like thing. It. You the first light, one goes you out. You light the third candle. I light the fifth candle. You light the fifth candle. There's two candles standing unlit. We should light them at the same time. What? Nope. No. <laughs> no. I think we should. <laughs> like four than two candle. or two than four? <gasps> I already did four. Sorry, man. Uh, I got too so excited. The fourth candle is lit. Who wants to do number two? Douglas snaps his fingers <laughs> and lights it. <laughs> so now all five of these candles are lit. A little bit of wax trickling off of them. Uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mood lighting. I'm going to move the mirror into the center of the candles. Uh, you kind of center the, the candles in front, illuminating this hexagonal mirror. And this crack running through the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Does the crack actually mean we can separate them into pieces? No. Uh, no. Okay. It's like aesthetic. It's just a crack it's in a frame kind of thing? It's aesthetics. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, pentagon or hexagon? It's a hexagon mirror. Okay, thanks. I was thinking we can make like infinite candles with like two mirrors on either side. Yeah. But wait, can't do that with one mirror. What if we laid the mirror down and pentagon has five points? It's a hexagon though. Hexagon. That's why I points. asked. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, shoot. Oh, but well, is, where's the crack? Oh, yeah, the crack is. We threw the middle. It's it's, it's aesthetic. Yeah, it's aesthetic. <laughs> you guys are so All obsessed that with crack. that. Crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe it was like blocking out one corner of, yeah. the, of the six corners. So there'd be five corners and five candles. Um, but yeah, no. we should just try and then make a sixth candle out of 
Oh, I like our that. own like uh, dungeoneering supplies. Well, you could, you, yeah, it's easy to make another candle of another. You literally just chop it in half. Yeah, there you go. That's a good idea. I you can also try just that? magically make a candle. It's not a real candle, though. I guess that, that might matter. Sure. Let's give it a shot. Do we want six candles? Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, yeah, to put a sixth candle and put all the candles around the points of yeah. the, the mirror. Or let's good. light six candles and see what happens. Make a proper satanic summoning circle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, how are, you getting, how are you getting a sixth candle? We're, We're going to cut one, one of the candles in half okay. and then just scrape away some of it so we can light the wick. Okay, you you do you do so. You now have six lit candles in front of the mirror. Dope. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Nothing happens, I, like I those, assume. I like those questions the DM asks that tell you you're not doing anything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you get a six candle? Obviously, there's no point in getting a six candle. <laughs> I, feel, I, I feel like, no, I'm just making sure. I feel like your, I your logic is there. You've yeah. got six it's, candles. It's, it's a sound. hexagon. <laughs> I look into the mirror. You see yourself. Who's the prettiest of them all? Um, I'm going to use comprehend languages and try to figure out these runes like you said it tells me a thing but i what don't know exactly like what piggy, it piggy, means piggy. well you're no you're you like you've seen these sorts of runes before okay. they're obviously conjuration uh-huh like but i can't read them or anything to say like words it's like there'd be some sort of activation thing associated with them they'll they'll do something based on whatever the code word given to them is or something like that piggy 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 yeah say it out loud you look into the mirror after saying that and Pretty sure on the north wall behind you, you see a lever in the reflection. You turn, Can I turn ar- around. Nothing there. I reach towards the mirror. And your hand touches the glass. Oh. Okay. Just watch the reflection and walk backwards towards the lever. Okay. Yeah. Use your make your reflection move or mage hand it. As you, as I don't you, have mage hand. As you back away from the mirror, eventually you are reaching for that thing, but you just can't get to the mm. lever. Direct one of us. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking okay. too. Great. I'm going to tell you exactly how to go Yeah, over the guy there. without a hand. I have a hand. He I don't has, have two hands. Yeah. <laughs> right. has, look, from the look of it, it is not a two-handed lever, just a single-handed lever. <laughs> <laughs> you, you direct Crate to the right spot, and you can see that his hand is passing through it as he hmm. attempts to hit it. You say piggy, piggy, piggy. In like a special language, or is it just piggy, piggy, Just piggy? say it. No one has said it but me. Piggy, piggy, piggy. 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 Jinx, you owe me a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a Dun-dun Legend Coke. 7 Pilsner Ale? It's hard instead? to not talk during a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> now that you have said the code phrase, you're able to see the lever when you look through the mirror. But when you turn to look at the actual wall, there's nothing there. Say piggy, piggy, piggy backwards. Uh, I was going to say it. Gip, gip, gip. <laughs> <laughs> you gip, you gip, you gip. You gip, you gip, you gip. No change. All right. I'm oh, sure that will work. The, <laughs> are we able to move the mirror around easily? You go to to pry it off the wall, and it's it's like totally frozen on there. Okay. You, you give it your best pull, and it's not moving. So something to do with these candles, then. Hmm. Oh. I'll move them over towards the lever where it's supposed to be. You could like, as you take the candles away, you move the first one away, and and you see in the reflection the lever disappears. Oh, okay. Oh. So we were right about that part. Well, can you like, I don't know, I was going to, I mean, if we can't move the candles, that scratches that, but we could like melt the wax onto where the lever would be and then it would, hmm. so we could see well, where we it is. we can't move the if we can't move them, yeah. candles. Yeah. What if we broke the mirror? Sounds like a bad idea. It seems why? like a last plan. Yeah. Why would we do that? <laughs> no, mirrors are bad. Yeah. Oh, right. So you hate you mirrors. Hate mirrors. <laughs> hmm. Um. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Uh, can I inspect where I saw the lever? Yes, like the wall. So you go over to the actual wall. You just see the smooth stone. It doesn't appear to have anything there. And it's six sided. What's across from where this spot is? Because I I saw it in the reflection. The south wall. Same thing. Nothing. Just smooth stone. Mm-hmm. Can I see this point from the mirror? No, you can't see either of those corners from the mirror. Unless you're standing right in front of the mirror, I mean. Hmm. Do you think piggy, piggy, piggy is a relationship to, like, but the piggy, 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 the previous one was a devil eating. Mm -hmm. So do you think this one also has something to do with consumption? Maybe. I don't know what we would consume. I mean, the first room didn't have anything to do with consuming, though. um, Could Douglas make a puddle of water? that has a reflection and like line it up so that 
because we, we got as we went away from the mirror, we couldn't see the lever in the mirror anymore. But we can make another reflection so we can see in the I mean, we have that puddle sh- reflection. Oh, yeah. We can see the uh, we have that mirror I have a shard of mirror as well, too. Okay. That so, works, too. Yeah, let's look through that. I mean, the issue I mean, is well, we don't have an issue of not being able to see it. Well, once we got close enough to the lever, we couldn't see the mirror anymore, right? Well, you, I couldn't, that you, was, could, like, see the you know how mirrors work where you can see like no. an, an angle reflected off yeah. of the mirror, right? So you yeah. can't see... Once you're off to the side of the mirror, you can't see the wall that's you're yeah. at. Uh, so right. if someone is midway with another mirror, we can let's oh, reflect okay. the, see the reflection in the reflection. Yeah, reflect. Oh. Sure. And got your, that sweet shield. Yeah. Let's use shiny? that angle of light, you guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you guys rig up a reflector reflector situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crate is there watching more manipulate his mirror, and he's like a little a little to the left, a little to the right, and then he gets the angle just right, and you can see the reflection of the mirror that shows you the lever, and now you can touch the lever and you pull on it, and you hear a. Da, 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 da. Yes, yeah. light. Sorry, little fifth element reference. You guys head back out into the main chamber, and across on the other balcony are two more doors. <laughs> Thank more goodness. Doors. Well, I, just, I was worried that he was going to say two old hay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Two old bags. More like, what happened to your sister? So, do you want to do octagon or square first? Square. Let's enter the octagon. Oh, the square. <laughs> no, we, we got to enter the octagon last. Yeah. This is just like an MMA fight. Yeah. Like. <laughs> square door. Square door. You go up to the door that has a square carved into it. This is in the very northeast corner of the balcony. You open this one. It creaks open. You enter a 15-foot hallway that opens up into a big square room, 15 by 15 feet. This room is filled with flying sheets of parchment with writing on the pages visible as they flutter past you. A metal plate is bolted into the far wall set with a ghostly lever. Ghost lever. I snatch one of the papers flying. Roll a D6. Uh Uh-oh. Just a D6. Yeah. D6 slashing damage. Paper, paper cut. cut. Yeah. Three. Okay. Yeah, three paper cuts. <laughs> <laughs> you got the third page of the third book. Whoa. I wanted to read number one, though. <laughs> Should have rolled a one. Damn. Roll me a 20 and a D6. 17. Okay. This is a page from a spell book. Cool. And on this page is written the spell... Major image. Do I get that now? Mm, you probably don't have time to transcribe it right but now. I but I have the paper. It's, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I put it in my bag. Do you think it has anything to do with the ghostly lever? Major image? It mm, could. I don't yeah, know. I guess you could make a image of the actual lever there or something. It would take me time to learn yeah. the spell, though. I grab a piece of paper. Okay. Uh, I also grab a piece of paper. Uh, each of you do the same roll. Three. 20. Great. You grab a page inscribed with the spell of sending. And what about you and more? My first dice was six. Ooh. My second dice was eight. Oh. This is a page inscribed with the spell Dromage's Instant Summons. Cool. Was, and then, oh. as more grabs the third page out of the air, All of the pages remaining in the room turn to dust and then coalesce into this tiny imp-like creature. No, wait, it's four imp-like creatures swirling around. (laughs) No, it's it's, it's just like it's shifting. The dust is like colliding with itself and then it, bam, there's these four dust-like creatures start swarming around the room and dive at you guys. Roll initiative. Seven for Lee. 22 for more. Four for Douglas. And for Crate. Also four. <laughs> Who is the, the higher bonus out of the two of you? Probably Douglas. Okay, more. You have this little dust imp creature swirling around the room, diving straight at you right now. It looks like it's going to attack you. What do you do? Eldritch Blast. Bam. 13. So your first ray hits. The 16 to hit. Okay, both of those hit. Do damage. Five damage on the first blast. And five damage on the second blast. And it does push them back. These four creatures swirling at you. Your first ray hits one on the left. Yeah. And it immediately just evaporates. Yeah. And then your second ray hits the one on the far right. And that immediately evaporates. There's still two more. It is their turn. 
Oh, it's turn. You can't tell. It's shifting around so much. And then you hear from the swirling moat of dust just as it comes forward to attack you. It says, Spindle Dash! <laughs> Everybody roll a d20. 13 for Douglas. 16 for Great. 16 for Lee. 14 for more. And then you see part of it burst off as this force wave slams in from the walls and you guys just managed to eke out of the way of this force. The dust creature takes the full brunt and you guys managed to avoid it. Spindle dash. So he mm-hmm. did this to himself and he hurt himself. He's either a Pokemon or he shouts all his attack names. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody else cast it. Mm, true. I think we heard it from that thing. It was from that thing for sure. Comes up to more and exhales a 15-foot cone of blinding dust out of its jaws. Go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Eight. You're blinded for a time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blind! I can't see. Just shoot rays everywhere. Oh, man. <laughs> shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> Lee, it's your turn. It is. Light this fucker up. Yeah, I was thinking using uh, my flaming sword. Because that, that seems like... That would be lighting them up. Yeah, and they, they seem to be made of paper. Well, yeah. now they're kind of dusty. I don't know. It's like dust a, is flammable. A swirling dust creature. Dust no, it's, is definitely it's not so bad. But yeah. yeah, go for it. Yeah. I mean, dead, I was going to do dead fire. So. Yeah. Okay, run up. Attack with disadvantage. Okay. Ha! 22. That hits. Dope. 15 damage. And you slash through the dust creature, and it just explodes into this fountain of dust. Moore and Lee both have to make a constitution saving throw. ruh row. Actually... Just Lee. Okay. You're already blind. (laughs) 20. You are fine. You managed to cover your eyes just as this dust blasts out at you. And you see as you guys all look back towards the center of the room, lying in the place just beneath where this creature died is a stick of black chalk. Hmm. 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 That sounds cool. I'll go investigate. All right. I assume we're out of initiative. You are. Cool. I did it. Good job. More. Take my hand. Take my hoof. Aw. Your hoof's so clammy. <laughs> That's, That's weird. weird. Yeah. <laughs> How's it sweating? Tell me about it. <laughs> I'm nervous. Yeah, I'll walk over and mm-hmm. pick up the chalk. Okay. It's this little stick of black chalk. Neat. I'm going to go test my artistic abilities and draw a lever. Uh, well, well, there's, you, a there's ghost actually lever. is a ghostly lever on yeah. the wall yeah. already. Yeah. I'm going to outline it. You're going to outline it? Like, just draw around it? <laughs> Never mind. <No. laughs> Is that what you do? <laughs> do it. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. All right. It becomes substantial. Good. I it pull just it. Like that. That mean. You draw a square around yeah. the lever because it's the challenge of the square. Mm. And you pull down on the lever and you hear from outside. Cool. All right. Good let's job. go ready to get. Oh, no, it's a rectangle. Everything sounds Adam's right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you head back out into the main room. The only door left is the octagon. Yeah. Let's get ready to rumble, I guess, as they say. <laughs> yeah. And will my blindness go away if we take a short rest? Takes a minute. Yes. You're fine. You managed to get that grit out of your eyes. Woo. I see again. You all your pretty faces. <laughs> you approach the final door and set with the carving of an octagon push it open just like you did the others you see that this room similarly sized to the other ones is plaster walled rather than stone walled it's 15 feet high there's a leather backed tome resting open atop a wooden lectern bolted to the floor set into the wall behind lectern are eight human skeletons arranged so they appear to be falling and screaming how do you <laughs> mime that <laughs> with skeletons <laughs> and their mouths are agape? Yeah, that's funny. Watch the floors, everybody. They're literally embedded into the plaster walls. Sorry. Oh, okay. They're I think not, he's saying they're not, not just for not just dangling not there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, let's not fall through a trap. Yeah, yeah. A pitfall. Say what you want about the Sarah but he's got the best interior designer. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time to dazzle us. That's true. Wooden lectern, falling skeletons behind it plaster walls. There was a book, wasn't there? The book is tome. open on open on the lectern, a tome. Are there pages missing? You go up to inspect it. Doesn't look like there's any pages missing. It is open, 
to the first page, and that page has a single line written in Infernal. Douglas Cass' Comprehend Languages touches the tome. You read the first line on this first page, and it says, Backward, backward, eight to one. You can tell that there are eight more pages. Yeah. Or seven more pages. I I read all eight pages. You flip to the next page. Speak the rhyme until it's done. You flip to the next page. Keep the spider locked away. Oh, yeah. Totally. (laughs) You flip to the next one. See the lever clear as day. You flip to the next one. Spin, spin, iron spider. The next page. Turn their flesh and bones to cider. You flip to the next one. Speak the rhyme and meet your fate. And you flip to the next one. Forward, forward, one to eight. Now, unfortunately, it is Infernal. So right now, Douglas is the only one who can understand or read it. I mean, yeah. I'm afraid to say it out loud, though, a little bit, but... Do you maybe got to speak it to these uh, skeletons? Backward, backward, eight to one. Speak the rhyme until it's done. Keep the spider locked away. See the lever clear as day. Spin, spin, iron spider. Turn their flesh and bones to cider. Speak the rhyme and meet your fate. Forward, forward, one to eight. And when you finish reciting it, these cracks begin to appear on the floor. And then you hear this whirring sound. Almost like an iron spider. Yeah, there's there's this of this whirling sound above you that it sounds like a grating iron fan. And suddenly Everything around you, your clothes or your lack of clothes. (laughs) My lack of clothes affects also my lack of clothes. Everything (laughs) starts to feel really light. Oh my God, we're getting Willy Wonka. (laughs) (laughs) Douglas, make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, The rest of you fall up into the ceiling. Seven. You all fall to the ceiling. Yeah. As you fall up towards the ceiling of the room, you hit this plaster roof which shatters, revealing the false ceiling is actually a cover for this giant iron fan above you, and you fall into it, taking a whole ton of slashing damage. Oh, my God. 48 slashing damage. 48? 48? 48 slashing damage. Holy Jesus, I'm glad I was, we had that short yeah, rest. Yeah. <laughs> Do we go through the fan, through the fan then? Right now, it's like almost at a level with you as you lie on the Yeah, roof. we're not through it so yet. So we're getting we're like pummeled up. by it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's like those Skyrim fans. It should be like less chopping every time it goes through a person though. Cause <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's, what's our floating order? <laughs> this was engineered by experts. <laughs> Just some stupid dwarves, but I don't even know what they do here. You have fallen to the ceiling. You've got this fan, fan blade zhoop, 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 slicing through you every time it comes around. Who wants to act first? I'd like to cast slow. On the fan. On the fan. Well, it's a 40-foot radius. Okay, let me take a look at slow. Oh, wait a minute. I think I can only cast it on creatures. You alter time around up yeah, to six creatures of your choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really... It doesn't apply to... You know what? It's cool, though. It's a neat idea. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. So, what the fuck, though? When I come up with cool ideas, you don't let me do them. <laughs> This is a cool idea that will prevent a TPK. <laughs> TPK. 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 Okay. So, no, we don't want that. I know. <laughs> what does that even stand for? <laughs> yeah. Tubular oh. party. Uh, Cowabunga. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? <laughs> Moore is acting first. Yes. Okay, he takes 32 damage. Oh my gosh. How you doing? I'm still conscious. So then there now you go. Now you can do your thing. Oh my gosh. That's a load of hooey. So I cast slow on the fam. And it... Oh, thank God. It's still spinning, but much, much slower. Yeah, but even oh if it God. hit us, it probably doesn't so hurt. <laughs> now does the lack of air sucking us up allow us to it's fall? Not, it's not air that was sucking you up. It's magic. Gravity reversed. Uh, who's going to go next? Somebody should cast a spell magic. I'm not made it a third level spells, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if fans are magic. Oh, it'd probably stop us from floating. Well, yeah, dispel the any gravity. Who's going to go next? 
Oh. I'm wondering, should I say it, like keep saying the chant, the, the rhyme? The TTK yeah. chant? The TTK. We'll say it until we stop saying it. I, I, it just says that, like, well, we're supposed to keep saying it. Speak the rhyme in, oh, until it's done. So, until that's done. And you did finish it. Speak and then the that's rhyme bad stuff in happened. nature, fate, forward, forward, one to eight. I'm just thinking it, like, we're still supposed to do something with it, maybe. Say it backwards. Per oh. line or like actually backwards? Oh, I'd say it line per line, maybe. <laughs> so, forward, forward, one to eight. Speak the rhyme and meet your fate. Turn the flesh and bones to cider. Spin, spin, iron spider. See the lover clear as day. Keep the spider locked away. Speak the rhyme until it's done. Backward, backward, eight to one. The rhyme from back to front. Doors of a secret compartment open behind the lectern, revealing a brass lever inside. We didn't but keep... we're still getting the shit kicked out of us. You're still on the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> Lee and Crate, you guys have not acted yet. I'm going to let Crate go first. Okay, well, we'll try Dispel Magic on the Anti-Gravity. So you target the magical effect. You you reach out and you attempt to target or try to sense what it is that's reversing your gravity. You cast Dispel Magic and everybody falls. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Five points of damage. Okay. I am three below. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I killed him. <laughs> you guys slam down onto the ground. And as more goes unconscious, the fan above you begins to shoo, 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 at full speed again. I'm going to pull the lever. Hold on. Wait, wait. We, we, we probably are going to heal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but rest. I just want to see what's going on. No, I don't know about a short rest, but at least a heal. I just want to see what's going on with Trevor. I have yeah. Defy Death. Once per long rest, you can regain 1d8 plus 3 HP when you succeed on a death saving throw or when you stabilize a creature with Spare the Dying. Okay, let's let them make so a death saving would, throw. That, <laughs> uh, they could just heal you faster than that. Like that's uh, an in emergency mid-combat type thing. Yeah, oh, okay. it's better to keep that for, uh, I'm sure, what's going to be a terrible boss after all of this. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, healing wise, what do you all got? We can do a short rest, and then I, I can potentially cast Healing Spirit. Short rest would be nice because I do still have a few more rolls I could do. Although this would be like my last Healing Spirit, at least at the level at the third level. Mm-hmm. Um, short rest also lets Trevor recover all his spells. Okay, let's do short rest then, and uh, we'll see where we're at. Okay. Did anybody pull the lever? Not, not yet. Not I yet. think we're gonna short rest first, and then pull the lever. Oh, those are good. Seven, nine, and seven. So I'm 30 below max. What are you guys at? Oh, I'm like 58 below max. Yeah, I'm at I'm at quarter. <laughs> I'm at quarter health. How many you can we're doing a short rest. You can use some of your I'd use three of them. Oof. You rolled bad. I well, I rolled decently good. I rolled Oh, I guess you were starting from zero. Yeah. I was starting from zero. So yeah. I, I I rolled twenty three hit points. All right. Welcome back. Thanks. You guys figured it out. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't read it backwards the first time. <laughs> That's why I was like, I'm really scared to read this. <laughs> All right. I think I do have to cast a healing spirit. So we get 10 to split amongst the four of us. 10 D6s. 20 D6s. Each one gets. Oh. Yeah. Because you roll two D6 now because I'm casting the third level oh, one. Sweet. So each of us is going to take two and then we're going to see where we're at. Are you all pretty bad off? I'm 30 below max, so I'm not terrible. I can cast Beacon of oh, Hope, yeah. which maximizes healing. Doesn't really sound like a great spell. No, it's Beacon of uh, Do Better. <laughs> <laughs> beacon, I am not disappointed in you. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean it'd be max? Uh, that's one? more about like uh, manipulating the forces of death than it is yeah. you know, so, healing. So, so if Crate, if Crate <laughs> uh, be... instills himself as, your, as a beacon of heroism and hope and inspires <laughs> all of you to do better in the world, <laughs> Just, you know, because he's such an inspiring figure. Uh, yeah, you would get maximum healing out of your So that's oh, 300 wow. hit points to split amongst us, basically. That's like the last good spell I have, though. If Is I it? That's pretty good, though. Because I'm thinking... Give we, us a fighting shot. I think we need it now we're, more than We're literally before. about to head into, like, boss territory. Spoilies. Well, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> come on now. Okay. All right, Beacon of Do Better. Everyone will take 24 hit points, I guess. To start, twenty four. I'm I'm good now. <laughs> okay, and maybe um, I'm just at half. You do have to deal it in twelve point yeah, increments. Yeah, in twelve points. Oh. So someone else is going to take another twelve, and then someone else is going to take another twelve. Either that, or all of 
Moore takes tw- another 24, unless Douglas really needs it. No, he should take it. Okay. Add another 24 then. Hooray. Thank you. Thank you both. That was a good trap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good job. Good job, DM. <laughs> I didn't plan it. It was given to me from on high. <laughs> God blessed you. I'd like to thank Pendleton Ward and Chris Perkins and all those great Pendleton people. Ward helped with us? He did. Oh, wow. That's why it's so weird sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> there's, that's why there's so much darkness. I don't know. I don't know how heavy his hand was in it, but he was, he's, on the, he's on the credits. Yeah, so that's we, interesting. Do we want to draw the, the lever now? Yeah, I take out my sketchbook. <laughs> you pull the lever, and from outside you hear... So we go back outside. Okay. You go back outside and the green smoke from that cauldron now fills the room almost to the ceiling. Oh, good. As you guys descend down the stairs, you get close to that green door and you can see that all five of the key holes are now wide open. But then from behind you, the center of the room, you hear... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're going to have to give us those great we can't let you go through that door and as you guys turn you suddenly all experience a vision like your vision goes black you feel like you're suddenly in this infinitely deep dark space with green motes of enervating light whipping around you you smell a distant burning like singed hair you can suddenly feel a prowling, watching presence. More, you've felt this presence for ten years. It's the thing that haunts every night of your sleep. You can tell that this is where your power comes from. Oh. <laughs> now you like it all of a sudden. No. Oh, Who's okay. your pact with? Well, you know. <laughs> no, we don't know. Eyes. <laughs> eyes from the darkness are eating you up as your soul lies exposed in this dark place. A hungry thing yowls and drools and slavers smelling your spirits. You know that to be touched by this dark creature would be to become nothing, to be chewed into oblivion, into limbo, maybe even worse than that. You would cease to exist in the most painful way, the most unimaginable of ways, and this thing shows you its dreams, shows you its desires, A hunger for a world devoid of life, populated with rot, consuming itself and spreading roiling death across the cosmos. It plays with the survivors of the death curse like a spider, weaving death around them like silk around a fly. It eats their limbs and their skin and their heart before consuming their soul. And then again, you hear that voice, the one that has haunted so many of your dreams and your nightmares for the past few days. It's buzzing with evil, with malice, with laughter that rattles the bones. I see you met my sweet. Your soul he wants to eat. Open the door. Be finished with these three ladies and cry. My sweet would love to watch you die. And then your vision suddenly returns to you and through the green smoke you see these three hunched figures. The night hags, the sewn sisters, the first of them with tarnished gold coins covering her eyes and ants nesting in her skull. These ants crawl out over her body and skitter across the floor towards you. The third wears a string of chattering children's teeth and thumps about on a heavy peg leg. As she laughs, you see yellow gas billowing out of her nose and ears. Around her neck, a pouch of skin dangles. The third has a squirming leather sack sewn over an entire head. You see the leather shift and move as if there's a whole bucket of animals inside there writhing and trying to get out. And you see just for a moment the edge of a snake poke its head out and you slither back in. Roll initiative. All right, what do you got, Douglas? 18. Crate. 20. Lee. Nine. And more. 10. Not too bad. Not great. For who? (laughs) For you. Oh. Specifically. Me? Lee? Yep. Yeah. Whoever goes last instantly dies. Because... (laughs) 
the hag with the coins over her eyes immediately points at Lee, and a ray launches from her finger. It goes to impact on you. Emotionally. <laughs> I break down in tears. Emotionally. What kind of ray you hitting me with? You could roll a knowledge arcana. Well, that's not going to go well. <laughs> this is a disadvantage too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that didn't go well. Nine. This is a ray. <laughs> oh! Whoa! Okay. Does a 15 hit Lee? No. Okay. So this ray blasts past you just over top of your shoulder, hitting the door behind you and explodes in this gross green. It is Crate's turn. Haha. I'm going to bestow upon my friends a small sliver of Dendar's power. <laughs> okay. Counter spell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> As you go to cast your spell, the coin-eyed woman says, No, you don't! Snaps her fingers and your spell fizzles on your hands. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I swear this never happens. <laughs> um, was she, the, she was the same one who shot the ray, too, wasn't right? She was, yeah. Oh, she's busy. It's a reaction, I guess. She's okay. busy. So cool. was that a third level or lower? Yes. Okay. Absolutely it was. I just wanted to make sure I didn't uh, need to roll didn't a check. Yeah. Neat. That was an action, so I'll, I'll just shield up and get ready. Okay, Douglas. Douglas is going to use the tried and true method of grease under these ladies' legs. <laughs> <laughs> real, okay. real grease them up. You know what happens when old people fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, what's my DC? Let's 16. pop some hips. <laughs> Dexterity. Okay. No, she's got a life alert bracelet. <laughs> get out of her hand (laughs) okay the hag with the coins over her eyes slips and falls to the ground the other two manage to keep their footing it is I thought you said pudding (laughs) I have my pudding in my hands you can't stop me (laughs) it's my favorite (laughs) anything else for Douglas we're all kind of clumped up right now right? you sure are yeah I'm gonna sidestep okay you uh, sidestep off to the side, yep. full movement away, like 30 feet, or are you just getting a little uh, bit away? I'll do a half, half okay. speed. So you're like 15 feet away. Yeah. The hag with the bag over her head. The hag with the bag. <laughs> the bag hag. <laughs> Some might call her a bag head. She also pulls up a finger, points at Lee, what and the f- launches a ray at you. What is going on? They don't like you. Racists? <laughs> Racist. Ah! Uh, what? <laughs> I'm a race. <laughs> 20 racist. Ray. Oh. Shooting rays at you. He's not laughing at this, the idea this. of being a race. <laughs> Lee, this is a 24 to hit you. Yeah. Okay. You feel weakened. Your muscles start to shrink and wither. What the fuck? You're going to deal half damage with your weapon attacks. Oh. Jeez. Wow. I'm going to be useless, guys. At least I'm going to take all the effects for you. BT dubs, when it ends its turn there, it does have to do another check. Oh, okay. So Baghead will make it safe. <laughs> Baghead. Baghead's fine. Okay. The hag with the peg leg waves her fingers and... Counterspell. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> ah, using my own tricks against me, hey? She will move off to the side a little bit, maybe 10 feet away from her uh, her sisters. So she's still on the grease then? What's the radius of it? 10 foot squared set her on a point. So I did it on her yeah, so, middle sister. <laughs> okay, so she's moving out of the, yeah. out of the grease. Yep. And then now it's Moore's turn. We'll all cast Eldritch Blast then. Okay. So you got coin eyes, bag head, and <laughs> peg leg. I love these names. <laughs> I'm going to cast it at Peg Leg because Peg Leg's who I canceled their spell. Okay. So I canceled their spell. Yeah. And then I cast two rays. Go ahead and roll your attacks with disadvantage. 23. Yep. Nine. All right. So you deal damage with the first one. Four damage. Four damage to Peg Leg. Lee, you are enfeebled. Yep. All right. Lee's still going to go in there and mix it up. She's going to go for the sister that split off. Okay. Because I think that's one that kind of messed up Lee, if I recall. Sure. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They're all one in the all same. All sisters are dumb. Peg, peg, <laughs> leg, peg, leg is, peg leg is off to the side. Baghead, who's the one that raid you, is in the middle still on top of the grease. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Okay. They all have to die. Okay. If she's in the grease, you got advantage on your attacks against her. If she's, oh, do you? If she's prone still. There's one that's no. prone, right? There is one that's prone. Coin eyes. Can I get to that one without being in the grease myself? Nope. Okay. Oh, that never mind. Screw that noise. 
All right, I'll go for the original one that I said, the one that stepped off to the side. Okay. And I'm going to use my staff. Okay. Because I have a good chance of hitting with that regardless. 16. Misses. Damn it. All right, swing again. 27? Yes. 14 damage, so 7 damage. All right, so 7 damage slams into the peg leg hag. No, who's not hindered? Hamlet. So Hammy's going to go for the same one as me. Okay. Hamlet uh, skitters across the floor, growling and hissing, jumps at peg leg. Uh, no. That's an eight. Oh, that misses. All right, it is Coin Eye's turn. She stands, moves back towards peg leg, and along the way, casting a spell on herself and as she casts the spell her arms begin to extend her muscles begin to bloat hair begins to sprout from all of her body and then just as she comes up to I'm going to counter spell everyone's coming uh, at me so hard. Fight. <laughs> What's, what spell level are you using third level okay make a check Roll that in that four. Yeah, okay. Eleven. Does not work. She completes her transformation. And before Lee stands this massive, huge, furry ape creature with gold coin eyes. It is now Crate's turn. Okay. Well, I'll target the two that are together. Yeah. Um, with uh, Toll the Dead. Bing bong, motherfuckers. <laughs> 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 16 DC. This is a wisdom? Yeah, uh, sure is. First one succeeds. The second one gets a 14. Not going to do it. Okay. They haven't taken damage yet, I don't think. Uh, this one has. Perfect. Four necrotic damage. <laughs> okay. Four out of a possible 24. No big deal. Okay. And then I will also cast spiritual weapon. Alrighty. And Let's get a little snake boy. And that's going to attack? Yep. Okay. Is that going to get disadvantage? That actually just might get counterspelled. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh. Yeah, counterspelled. Baghead, still on the grease, says, that's enough of you, snaps her fingers, and your spiritual weapon snaps out of existence just as it was starting to appear. Damn. That's why I cast the shitty spell first. <laughs> I was hoping to bait her out, but oh uh, well. Douglas. Too smart for me. I am going to cast Storm Sphere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not on us this time. <laughs> well, I can see now, so that's helpful. <laughs> Strength, 16. What's the spell level of that? Four. One of them attempts to snap their fingers at it. You can feel the pull of the counter spell is attempt to snap at it, and it does not succeed. Your storm sphere continues to appear and grow. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think everybody has to make strength saving throws. Except for that I do have, oh, you have spell, spell shape, shape. Okay. so I'm going to make it so it's only on them. Okay. <laughs> So strength saving throw 16. It's a 20 foot radius. A whirling air springs into existence centered on a point you choose within range. Okay. Coin eyes succeeds. Giant ape body lending her extra strength. <laughs> Bag head succeeds. What? I <laughs> thought that was strength. And peg leg also succeeds. Bang. Do I take half damage or? No, they don't. But I'm going to lightning strike one of those chicks. Basically the ape one. The ape one? Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably no. Bolt of lightning cracks past uh, coin eyes, hitting the ground beside her. This wind swirling around mm -hmm. the room, buffeting the three hags and attempting to toss them all over the place. It is now Baghead's turn. But it's still difficult terrain. Yep. She, standing in her spot right now, will cast magic missile. What? <laughs> Noob from back. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be at more. 11 points of damage. These bolts of vile darkness slam into more, and she skitters off towards her sisters off of the edge of the grease. <laughs> it is now Pegleg's turn. Pegleg will move in such a way that she's trying to line up Lee and Crate in a row. And will cast a lightning bolt. She pulls from another plane of existence this full current of elemental air. It crackles with static electricity, launches in a straight line, straight through Lee and straight through Crate. 
go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. 23 for Lee. That saves. 21. Nice. Both of those save. It would be 31 damage if you'd failed your save. Whoa. So take 15 lightning damage each. It is now Moore's turn. These three hags are all centered around Crate and Lee, ready to bear down upon them. What do you do, Moore? Entreat your dark god. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you yelling? Dark god bros, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although every time I tried to do that, this fight it got countered. <laughs> so maybe not. I'm going to Eldritch Blast. I miss. And 19. 19 hits. Who are you shooting at? Coin Eyes, Baghead, or Pegleg? Pegleg. Okay. Eight damage. All right. Eight damage slams into Pegleg. Blasts her back. She's now on the other side of Crate. Slid back a little bit. It is now Lee's turn. Okay. Gonna keep swinging away like I was before. Okay. So there's Ape One in front of me, and. There's Coin Eye Ape. Baghead, peg leg. They're all right around you and Crate right now. Who's taking the most damage? You guys have hit on peg leg a couple times, but nobody else. Okay, let's go for peg leg then. 23 to hit. 23 hits. All right. 15, so they're going to take 7 again. Okay. And they'll swing again. Nice damage. 12 is a miss, yeah. A slam with the staff and a woof. And Hamlet, seeing me in dire straits, is going to attack the same one. Okay. No, miss. Okay. It is now Coin Eye's turn. This giant ape lumbering over Crate reaches down and enwraps Crate in both of its arms, putting him in a bear hug. This is going to be a grapple check, so uh, opposed athletics or acrobatics. 11. 11. I rolled a natural one. Oh, cool. So you just managed to slip away. Squeezing your way out of the creature's arms. Save for your infieldment there, Dan. Oh. Constitution saving throw. That should do it. 19. You save, and you can feel your strength flood back into your arms. Oh, it's coming, bitches. (laughs) Frustrated that her attempt to grab Crate was not successful, she slams down with a fist on top of your head. That is a 23 to hit. Okay. 29 points of bludgeoning damage. It's the worst of the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> that is surprisingly accurate. <laughs> uh, the ape uh, attempts to grab you and then slams at you with a fist, shaking you down to the very core. It is now your turn, Great. Okay, so I'm going to switch from shield to mace. Okay. I'm going to cast shield of faith on myself. Okay. And I'm going to hit, hit her. I'm going to hit her. (laughs) (laughs) That's called abuse. (laughs) Uh, And you're going for coin eyes? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Oh. Ooh, ooh, take your pick. One or two. (laughs) (laughs) One. (laughs) Wow, whiff. Just, you're not used to the left-handed mace Mm -hmm. right now. You're still reeling from having lost your dominant hand. You swing your mace, but it just goes too wide, clunks harmlessly against the side of the ape's knee, and it is Douglas's turn. Okay. I'm going to cast Ray of Frost on the ape lady. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Ooh. Disadvantage thing is going to murder us. Yep. It's pretty brutal. It is really brutal. These uh, ladies were prepared for you. Yeah. I'm going to do the lightning bolt, hopefully. Ah, uh, yes. They knew I was fasting. And who are you hitting? Same lady. Okay. 19. 19 hits. The ape is struck by your lightning bolt. Go ahead and do your damage. 17. 17 points of damage. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to shout at them, hey, what's your names, by the way? (laughs) The lightning courses through the hag's body, giant ape's body. You can see the skeleton within it. (laughs) And then she's blasted back. As the smoke clears, you see that the ape body has disappeared and she's back in hag form. She says, my name is Widow Groat and you won't survive to tell anybody else. And then... Uh, sure thing, Pegleg. <laughs> oh, no, you're coin <laughs> I'm coin <coin-eyed. laughs> That's why I wanted to know their names. <laughs> and then Baghead is going to take her turn. 
Widow Grove Baghead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she, she just mumbles. Yeah. <laughs> Baghead, as Crate is distracted by the giant ape in front of him there. Or the, non-ape. The, the, the non-ape in front of him. She reaches out and attempts to grab a skull off your belt. Hey, oh, those no. are mine. Acrobatics or athletics check. 22. Oh, you managed to just slip out of the way as her clawed hand grabs at your belt. <laughs> This Whack like, her hand away yeah, she, with your stone. This is the thing you care about more than anything. So you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Give me that skull. And then Pegleg will launch another set of magic missiles at Lee. Nine points of damage to Lee. Okay. It is now Moore's turn. Cast Chill Touch. Okay. Sounds fun. Do I have um, to touch them? No. <laughs> It is actually Ew. it's actually one of the worst named spells yeah, in the game because neither does it do cold damage <laughs> or is it a touch attack. <laughs> oh, yeah. You actually conjure a spectral undead mm. hand that touches something oh. for you. Yeah. So well, you that make, hand is cold. You make a I think you make a ranged attack. Yeah. Ranged spell attack. So go ahead and roll that. Creepy hand. Uh, 16 to hit. Old pig leg. Not enough. It is now Lee's turn. Still swinging. Swing but away. Now, now energize with your full strength back. Yep. All right. Uh, whoever's in front of me is getting hit. So pick crate. One. Pick one. No. <laughs> crate. <laughs> yeah. Who knows our time? What are you doing? <laughs> Let's go peg leg. 23. That hits. 15 damage. Ooh, <laughs> nice. There we go. That's the Lee we all know and love. Mm-hmm. 21. That also hits. 15. Oh, boy. Nice. It's damage on both. There's some good damage. What about Hammy? Hammy's going in. 18. Yep. Cool. Go, Hammy. Go, Hammy. It's your birthday. It is his birthday. Oh, oh that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> to have to celebrate a birthday in this place. Yeah. What a brutal I mean, life. I feel like we've at least... How many years has it been now since we started? The game? In game like, time. That hasn't been years. In game? Yeah. You've, it's been like a month and a few what? days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You've been in this dungeon for two nights. <laughs> <laughs> These are like the worst two days. It's felt like a lifetime. It has. You should tell me when it's like done or something because that's when my staff recharges. Yeah, I would tell you if you took a long rest. We, I would if you'd let us. <laughs> oh, he... Go ahead. Nine damage. <laughs> Nine damage. <laughs> From Hammy. <laughs> You've done 69 points of damage. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Jackpot. Noise. Does she die instantly? No. From pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you ever... <laughs> if you ever do 69 points damage exactly in one hit, then... They will die of pleasure. That's the only time. Fair enough. That's a DM promise for That's you. A DM promise. Put it in the books. <laughs> Tweet it. It's official. Lee, your turn is over. It is now Coin Eye's turn. Frustrated that her polymorph has been broken, she will attempt to slash at Douglas. Oh, but I'm far away now. Oh, she's coming right for you. Is that opportunity? Sure. Also, rough terrain or whatever, so she's slowed. Oh yeah. Mhm. <laughs> yeah, your your special die is wasted now. 9. She manages to get away from crate without a hit, but of course cuz we've got all that wind difficult and terrain and yeah. wind and shit, she is not able to make it all the way over to Douglas, so instead make it about halfway and then launch a magic missile at you. Okay. 3 of them <laughs> even. 11 points of damage. Okay. Great. Peg leg. Uh, Shield of Faith whips around and bashes her across the face. It's a shove, so she gets to roll acrobatics or athletics. Uh, 18. Not as much as that. Okay. It's okay. Regular attack with the Warhammer. (laughs) (laughs) That purple die, though. Wow. Okay. Douglas. You see Crate just floundering over there in front of Peg Legs. You got a, a head bearing, bearing in on you. Widow Groat, the only named Hank. <laughs> yeah, the only, I'm the only nice person to ask a name. <laughs> I don't need their names. Okay, I'm going to um, attempt to like Ray of Frost once again. After. 
Sorry. Sorry. Ray of Frost. Ray of Frost. <laughs> Is that what I thought I heard? No. <laughs> nope. No Ray of Frost. Doesn't happen. And then I'm going to, once again, try to hit her with a lightning bolt. Okay. 16. Okay. That misses. Yeah. And then I'm going to move back further again okay. and <laughs> shuffle back. Ta- taunt her Sounds as I move good. my speed. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Baghead and Pegleg, both surrounding Crate at this point, will both slash with their claws, attempting to bring him down. First one, natural 20. <laughs> Second egg, 16. No. Okay. That is 28 slashing damage from a crit as Baghead rakes her claws across your chest, ripping through parts of your armor. With a gleeful eye. <laughs> More, it is your turn. I'm casting slow on them. Okay. So I make a saving throw. Wisdom 15. Wisdom 15. Okay. Baghead fails. <gasps> oh. yeah. But Pegleg succeeds. Coin Eyes also succeeds. Widow Groat makes her way out of the slow. What's that do? Speed is halved. Minus two to AC and deck saving throws cannot use reactions. On its turn, it can use an action or a bonus action, but not both. <laughs> okay. More. Uh, was a good turn. Any bonus actions? Move actions? No. Okay. Lee. Time to hit them with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking out the big sticks. Yeah. yeah. I'll Tried and show true. you, old lady. Take right. your cane and whack it with it. Whack her with it. Yeah. Peg leg. You're going down. 23. That hits, yeah. Yeah, it does. 13 damage. Okay. 17. Okay. Is that a hit? Uh, 17 is a hit, yeah. Okay. 12 damage. Okay. And hammy. No. Okay. No ham. <laughs> no ham tonight. No, no ham, ham tonight. All right. Peg leg is looking like she's in bad shape. Coin eyes, however, seeing Douglas run away, looks back to her sisters, looks up at Douglas, and then snarls. <sighs> I just give her a peace sign. <laughs> and I'll just give you one of these. And she launches another set of magic missiles at you. Okay. That is 11 points of damage, and she skitters back towards her sisters, towards Crate and Lee. <laughs> because of the rough terrain. Because of the rough terrain. Yeah. Stop her from healing. I can't do that. Well, no, I'm just saying that in general, not necessarily to you. <laughs> okay. And then, Crate, it is your turn. These three hags bearing back in on you. Kill Pegleg. Pegleg's the slowed one, right? Pe- Baghead is slowed. Pegleg is hurt. Yeah, Pegleg's almost dead, so yeah. you might as well keep the slowed one alive because then they'll be slowed. Yeah, but there's the one I might actually be able to hit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just because low AC, you know. But... Well, roll your good die twice. <laughs> All right, we'll try it. The crate watches Pegleg trying to skitter away and chases after, and that shield swings around and bashes her in the back of the face. <laughs> Acrobatics <laughs> or athletics, please? Back of the face, eh? Yeah. <laughs> 14. Damn it. 23. Okay, well, follow up. Warhammer. Okay. 16. Just short. I'm afraid that does not hit your Warhammer. Deflects off of her arm bone, and she cackles. That is, Disadvantage is fun. Mm-hmm. Disadvantage sucks. It is, you could cure it if you want. Doug, go. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to move up my speed to get closer to these ladies. And I'm going to burning hands in our big old row. <laughs> nice. I'll give you... DC 16. Dex. I'll let you hit two of them. Cool. 16? 16? 16 is the target, yeah. So. Coin eyes will take half damage and... Peg leg takes full damage. Okay. I'm rolling this actually as a fourth level, so I might do, kill peg leg. Do a little nice. bit. Sixteen. Sixteen points of damage. Yeah. Peg leg is singed really terribly. Part of her peg leg is beginning to burn away along with <laughs> some of the along with some of the leather and clothing on her body. You can see these terrible burns and welts all over her from the damage she's been taking from Lee. She's in a bad, bad way. Okay, well, I'm going to try to put her out of her misery, hopefully, and lightning strike her. Okay. 22. That hits. Yay. Do you deal more than two damage? I definitely do. 
the bones within her body crackle with lightning as this lightning bolt strikes into her, blasting right through the ground, leaving a big black pockmark as she is incinerated by the lightning bolt. Pegleg is off the field, completely blasted away. Her two sisters, no, no! And I'm like, I didn't even learn her name. <laughs> <laughs> and then Baghead, in slow motion, <laughs> All right. She actually goes, no. <laughs> Turns around and attempts to cast a spell at you, but she's slowed, so oh, she gets it off. Uh-oh. Counterspell. <laughs> <laughs> do you have counterspell? I do. Left? I sure do. I'm going to cast it at a fourth level spell. Her spell fizzles. Oof. <laughs> nice work. And it she's is so slow, I'm like, boom. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> You see it. She's telegraphing really bad. Yeah. Just, <laughs> 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 and like, before she's at her full point, I just snap my fingers and stop the spell. <laughs> and then and then she like looks at her hands and she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> More, your turn. I spit in her face. <laughs> oh, my God. Breath weapon. <laughs> All right. well, I guess it's a 15. I always AC. forget that's a thing for you. <laughs> yeah, you're just not being an asshole. <laughs> 15 dexterity save? 15 dexterity save. Ooh, I fail. 13 acid damage in to, the face. To Baghead. To Baghead. All right, nice. She gets to make a wisdom save for her slow. Does a 16 end the slow? 15. Baghead is no longer slowed. And then it'll be Lee's turn. It's never stopped me before from beating up an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, you prefer the fast ones. Yeah, yeah. I like the chase. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Lee's going to keep doing what she's doing. Yeah, I hit. Okay, you hit Baghead once. Do you hit her twice? Yep. Okay. 10 damage on the first hit, 15 damage on the second hit. And then Hammy will pounce on her as well. 16, no. Okay. You turn to Baghead just as the slow spell snaps off and you wham, wham, whack her in the gut, whack her across the shoulders and the the neck, dealing a a fair amount of damage. It is now Coin Eye's turn, frustrated that her sisters are both injured and one of them is killed. She will attempt to cast another spell, this time arcing a lightning bolt that will strike. Counter spell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can. Want me to? Up to you. <laughs> I think we're going to long Who's, rest oh, after you, this. You already used your reaction. This round yeah, 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 that's okay. true. Another turn. Okay, this is going to be. Uh, <laughs> like, what I mean, you can counter spell too. I ran out. I can oh, only okay. cast two two pack moons. So. Oh, okay. I can believe real hard. <laughs> I'm going to dodge it. So of the. Four of you that are nearby, I'm going to hit three of you. It will be more Crate, and Lee. Make a dexterity saving throw. 11 for Lee. 16 for Crate. 15. Okay. Both Crate and more save. Damn it. It is 38 points of lightning Holy damage. Holy balls. Oh, my. Holy jeez. I killed, killed my sister. I didn't. I didn't in power. <laughs> <laughs> the, the coins over her eyes begin to glow with heat, and it is now Crate's turn. Did you take any damage there? No. Nice. Okay, I want to hit something. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Crate, uh, you are welcome to try. Yeah. Crate uh, adjusts his crown and stomps over to. <laughs> um, Still wearing the crown. Of course. <laughs> uh, stomps over to what's her face? Yeah. And uh, shield bash again. <laughs> Twelve. <Come on. laughs> Actually, less than that. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> nope. Okay. Warhammer. Ah. Uh, no. I don't know. Ten ish. <laughs> Douglas, you're seeing that truth here that believing in a dark, evil god just doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah, renounce your god, then you'll hit her. Uh, Douglas, your turn. Yeah, renounce your dark god so you can hit this old woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the landscape look like currently? Right now, you've got Baghead and Widow Grote both kind of right beside Morley and Crate. Hamlet's in there somewhere. 
you're kind of off to the side. There's just green, hazy smoke everywhere, kind of partially obscuring your vision. I, I'm going to cast Burning Hands at a fifth level <laughs> to get both those. So DC, Dexterity, 16. Widow Groat fails. Baghead fails. Yay. Both of them will take full damage. How many, how many Ds is it? <laughs> it's all the Ds. Seven D6s. Seven Ooh, D6s. Nelly. I'm just going to use my quick roll here for you. 30 points of damage. Wow. Not bad. Very nicely done. That is 30 points of damage to each of them. They both cry out in pain. And I'm going to one yep. more time. Which one looks worse off? Right now, Baghead looks pretty sad. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to leave the one who has her name out there. <laughs> She's going to watch her sisters die. Jeez. <laughs> nope. Never mind. Maybe if you were down to your dark another, god. <laughs> another bolt of lightning cracks down from the ceiling and just misses Baghead. It is now her turn. She's going to slash, rip, and tear into Crate again. Bring it, old lady. <laughs> 15 to hit. Nope. Just misses. Just barely misses by like a tiniest little bit. By a fair bit, actually. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> More. When I cast Eldritch Blast and I'm casting two beams, can I shoot one beam at yeah. both? Yeah, All sure right. Can. So I'm going to do that. Spread out the uh, damage. First, first at Bag Lady. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cat Lady. <laughs> 17. That hits. Gosh. And then I'm just going to cast the second attack. Oh, same attack. 17 on both. Yep, so hits Coin Eye as well. First attack. 11. Yep. Okay. And second one is 10. All right. Both of them blasted back away from Crate and Lee by these eldritch blasts of force energy. It is now Lee's turn. You got a little bit of breathing room there if you need it, but you nope. can run right up and smash if you want. I'm smashing. I'm here to smash. 24 yeah. to hit, and I'll just roll to see if I hit a second time, which I do. Here comes the pain. 10 on the first one, and 13 on the second one. Okay. Uh, and then... Is that Baghead or Coin Eye? Baghead. Okay. Baghead's taking a, a walloping. Uh, Hamlet? Hamlet is hopping on, hopping to 18. 18 hits. Pounces on Bag Lady. 12 damage. Hamlet takes Baghead to the ground, rips and tears, and as he devours her throat, she just dissolves into this green ash. Gross. Mm -hmm. Dead. (laughs) 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 Dissolves into a green ash. More powerful than ever. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we breathe our in and out. Seeing both of her sisters fallen, Widow Groat turns towards Lee, the bringer of her sister's destruction. She rushes straight at you. Lee points to Hamlet. Battered by the wind and the storm, she comes and slashes at you with her claws. 17 to hit Lee. Oh, uh, yeah. 12 points of slashing okay. damage. And then it is Crate's Oof, turn. I thought I was going to drop there. Guys, I think there's something wrong with my Warhammer. Uh, I think <laughs> something it's else. the weight's off. Yeah. 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 We need to get it tuned. Attuned, probably. But wow. I don't have anything better to do, so. <laughs> <laughs> so shield dash. Let's get this old lady on the floor. There, there we go. go. 22 versus acrobatics or athletics. She fails. You bash her to the ground. She falls down, crumpled on the floor, weeping. <laughs> My hair! <laughs> she, <laughs> she weeps. No! Please! And I answer with a warhammer to the face. <laughs> you get This is just a regular because she's... Exactly. Nice. That's the whole reason I was trying to do that for four turns in a row. Well, it's still not great. Yeah, 14. <laughs> <laughs> she manages to just roll to the side as your warhammer slams into the ground. Again, she cries out, Mercy, please, I can tell you. I can tell you about Osirak. Douglas, it's your turn. Kill her. Tell me. Cut her tongue out. Spare me. That- Promise. Uh- swear. <laughs> swear that you will s- spare me and I can give you 
give you what you need to know. Swear on your mortal souls and it will be binding and I cannot harm you and you will let me go. I swear if it's good, I, I will swear bury you. Hamlet can't swear on his soul. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Cr- That's a loophole. <laughs> Crate's missing hand has its fingers crossed somewhere. <laughs> I say, if it's good, I'll spare you. I will tell you. I will tell you everything you need to know in two weeks. If you enjoyed the show and want to support what we do, number one way is to leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Furthermore, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Share our new episodes on social media. Visit the House of Bob merch website on Etsy for House of Bob zines, dice trays, art prints, and more. And by joining the House of Bob Discord server to hear all the new episodes three days early. Artwork for this episode was by Sean Makes of Instagram.com slash Sean Makes. Audio production was provided by Astronomic Audio, the 100% Canadian-owned and operated podcast editing service that makes your big ideas sound even bigger. Music was produced by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. The House of Bob podcast is made possible thanks to all of our fantastic Patreon supporters, including Jessica, Kieran Duffy, Mike from the Tales of the Glass Guarded World podcast, Sylvia Douglas, Luke Conroy, and Folt. If you'd like to support us, head over to patreon.com slash the house of Bob. Does anybody else need a bio break? Yes, please. Let me finish my description then. Okay. okay. <laughs> you sit there. <laughs> you sit there and listen. Does any of you guys need to be? Fuck you. <laughs>